Okay, so continuing here with our Gradebook app, now we're going to refine the display when we look at an existing set of records. Let's go to NetBeans. Still got this app open. I'm in the display class set. Before I do this, let's run this and make sure we're on the same page. I've done a few small refinements to the interface uh, to show, for instance, here. Uh, I have it showing the file header now, which actually forms a header for the student records table. Let's run it real quick. And maybe it'd be good to do a major check and just try everything. So I'll create a new data set. Okay, so we'll create a new data set. And then, uh, let's see, this is going to be uh, second grade... Uh, Whoops, there's my phone. Okay, so how about second grade uh, pyromancy? That's reading the future in fire. All right. Okay, let's see. Feral Quinn. Yes. Uh... Billy Brago. I'm just thinking some names up at my my head here. Sally. Oops. Simpson. But one more here. Uh, Django. Rude. Okay, now let's add some grades. We'll have to painfully find our file again. I still haven't figured quite how to set that in relation to NetBeans. Um, it doesn't really matter. I mean, it doesn't make sense to go to a lot of trouble to set it to a value that's just local to my development. So we want to figure out how to set it in relation to the NetBeans folder where it's running. And there we go, second grade pyromancy.txt. And now we'll just minimize this, go back to NetBeans. There's the folks. Is this the class you want to enter grades for? Looks like I got a typo in there, I'll fix. But basically, this is the yes no confirm. So we can back out if we chose the wrong file. And then uh, now I have to tell what it wants to be. The, uh, is this a lab, a test, or assignment, whatever. And uh, I'm going to say this is lab 01 for pyromancy. And uh, we'll start with this pattern I've been using where I'll just count down. So 100, then 90, then 80, and then... Uh, Django 70 and you can see I've just changed the prompt a little so now it says enter grade for lab 014 and gives the student name and again it shows the range so it just uh, is a little bit better easier for the, the uh, user to follow okay so now we've entered the first set of grades let's go ahead and try and enter a second set here and then we'll have data that we can use in the next part of our development. So again, I have to go to desktop, uh, Google Drive, Computer One, Gradebook App, Gradebook App, and then we want to uh, second grade pyromancy open, and there we go. And so we can see that we've. Uh, got the original grades now we're going to add another grade and notice too that uh, in the display it shows the column header so I have a grade for lab one now we're going to call this one quiz one whoops almost wasn't paying attention there so again yes I want to continue with this grade set now I want to make this quiz one and now I'll enter the grades for quiz one and again we'll assume that pattern where each student is progressively worse than the previous because um, we can with just a few numbers we can use that to 
figure out if our calculations are going to be right that we're about to do. Okay, um, one more time. I just want to check um, the grid set with the display. And this is what we're about to modify, too. I still haven't figured out why sometimes it close, opens on the back and sometimes it opens uh, on top. But uh, now that we know, we're good to go. And I'll look into that. I, I haven't really searched to fix that yet. Okay, uh, here we go. Second grade pyromancy. And now we can see that we have two grades now. Lab 01 and Quiz 1 for our four students in that class. Okay, let's go ahead and exit the program from the menu. Now that we have that, it's a good idea to do that so it's not just running while we're working the source code. I guess at some point that would uh, take down the load on the IDE. Alright, so uh, if you look at the current code, here's where it displays the student. And so what it does is it just uh, displays the uh, record count and then the line from the file and it's not really parsing that. So what we want to do now is we want to really display it as a series of numbers, not a single string, and then add the calculated fields to it. And I could inline all this right here, but I'm kind of wanting to instead uh, do something like this. So let me go ahead and I'll put in the new line. I'm going to comment this line out. And now here's what I want to do. So uh, south tab still. Whoops. And then I'm going to call a method. And uh, this is going to basically take that uh, record count and the record and format it for us. And so then as I grow on this line here, I'll basically be using my own method that I'm writing. So it's called, uh, whoops, I didn't explain that where the dam did I, sorry. Uh, so we want to have, uh, I'm thinking format record display, yeah, format record display and what this will do is it'll take this information which we're already just showing and it'll format it and part of that formatting will be to add the stats to the end of the line so you can see over here it doesn't recognize the format uh, record display because uh, I need to make that so I'll click over here and it'll give me the option to create that method I'll go ahead and do that and then it should be at the bottom there it is so now we're gonna take our method so let's look at what's going on here this is gonna basically um, take the integer which is the number of the record and then the record and then now what we want to do is we want to sort of parse, that's the fancy word for uh, taking the record and breaking it down into the individual parts. And right now the whole record is a string, but if we want to do something like calculate the average or those test grades, we need to convert the test grades to number. Okay? So um, we're going to have a string called RET, which is what we're going to return. This will be the uh, new string that uh, has the additional formatting information okay and actually we can set this right off we can just say this is uh, string return equals that plus student record count plus space Okay, so that's going to put the number at the start. And then now we're going to do something uh, which you might find interesting. So we're going to create an array of strings called string array uh, 
record record split equals and then we're going to say student record dot split on a comma and what that should do let's see student record dot split comma oops I got student record spelled wrong right here that should create an array and, and we don't know how big the array will be which this is kind of a cool Java function so it's going to take the string and split it on uh, each of the commas into an array and so something like this uh, Tom Bombadil whoops Bombadil colon or comma sorry uh, let's say 100 comma 90 that's basically kind of be start as a string so it'll just be a string of letters and then it'll get split into an array of strings and then we can basically know that the first one is always the name so it's really a string but we can convert all the rest to numbers okay so that's what the record looks like and when I split it I'll have a string array this first array would have three elements Tom Bombadil is the first 100 is the second 90 is the third and then I'm going to use the numbers past the first one to calculate the average okay so I split this up and so then now I just say um, I need some more variables here so int sum equals and then uh, let's see we'll set this to zero initially and so now I'm going to just do a for loop for int i for index equals one this is going to start at the first one because the uh, I'm at the second item the first item is the name but the first number is the second column which has an index of one and then while i is less than uh, record split dot uh, length and then i plus plus oops there we go so then basically um, let's go ahead and make a box there okay yeah sum plus equal and then now we just do this record split square bracket i and then we have to convert that to a number so since that's a string we have this uh, parse double parse int function I think it's uh, going to work like this. Parse int adjure. I'll have to do, see if I can remember how to do this. Uh, it doesn't seem to like that. Let me see if I just need a semicolon down here at the end. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, it's integer dot parse integer. Okay. And that's going to be lowercase, yeah. There it is, integer parse int. Okay, sorry. Been a while. All right, so sum plus integer parse int. So what integer parse int does is it returns the number. So sum is an integer here. And so now we're adding the value of each grade to the number, and we'll get a sum. And by the end of this loop, we'll have all of them. And then average is going to be the number. So that's easy to calculate. So int average equals 
sum divided by record split dot length minus one because um, we need to do that first so we have to put parens in here for that's because of uh, uh, oh, wait a second yeah because see we're not going through the whole array the length minus one is we're taking the name of the student out you don't want that in the calculation so that should be right okay now uh, we might need to put some code in here let's see Yeah, so basically we need to test and make sure that this isn't just uh, a zero link string. Uh, I'm sorry, a record with no grades. So let's come back up here. And uh, here's the test for that. So if we just say if and then record split. Uh, you know, I don't know what's going to happen. Does it just return the array? It will be interesting to see. Uh, so if record sprint dot length is greater than one, then we know we have records. Okay, otherwise we don't do this. So then let's go ahead and put all of the if code in a block. And then the else will be to, um, let's see, well we'll come to that in a second, let's finish the uh, if first. So we want to figure out what stats we want to attach to the, uh, okay, so we have that, oops, what's going on here? What the hell? Oh, I see. Here we go. Let's get all the uh, indentation fixed. That makes it easier to read. So this comes out. There we go. So right here we calculate the average. And then, um, do we need anything more? Standard deviation? I don't think so. Let's just do the average for now. Okay, so now the record that we're going to return is going to be the original record. Uh, let's see, we started that already up here. So you can see that the return record is simply the student record count. Plus the student record which is all the grades as a comma separated list let's see no that's the entire thing it's got the name in it too so you see what we're doing here the string return is going to have the number of the record and then it'll have the student record and then um, if we have an average we'll add that on and we can do that here. Shit. Um, student record plus equal. And let's put a tab in there. And then average grade space plus F otherwise the student record uh, let's see is done okay so if we don't have enough grades to compute an average then we simply return that record, otherwise we add the average on. 
So this is going to be return student record. Okay. Why doesn't it like that? Oh, this is wrong. Why does it say Boolean? This should be returning a string. I didn't catch that when NetBeans created the method for me. I wonder why I thought that. I might not have called it correctly. Let's come back up here. So this is going to be in our display. Oops, let's just go to our navigator here. So if you run over the code navigator and then we want display class set. Oops, damn it. Didn't quite get it. There we go. So format record display. Yeah, and then see that returns a string, which then gets printed here. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see if this works. So now I want to display class set. So that's option three. And then again, it's opening it up behind me. So I'll minimize NetBeans so I can get to the tool, or wizard. Go up to uh, desktop, then my Google Drive. Computer Programming 1 Working Directory, Gradebook Gap Project Directory, and uh, didn't I just create a new one? Yeah, the second grade pyromancy text. So let's open that back into NetBeans. Oops, we got an error. So let's see. Exception in thread main, Java Lang number format exception for input string 100. Number format exception. Hmm. All right, let's try trimming this. That removes any leading or, or following spaces. Uh, I suspect that it left the, uh, let's see, see I thought this would take out the comma, uh, so what we need to do is we need to display our record split, so um, let's see. Let's see if that works here. So we'll debug it. What that should do is just print the array out so I can see what's in it. Okay, run it again. Uh, we want to display an existing file. So option three. Minimize the interface to find the file dialog. And then uh, here I want to go to my desktop, Google Drive, CP1 working. Uh, grade book app, and then we want our pyromancy. Okay, here we go, and then back. Interesting. All 
Oh, that's that's weird that it's working, but what it's doing is it's printing the hash code for the array. I thought it would print the array out for me and it didn't. Uh okay. So is it it's still running? That's weird. I thought it broke before. Let's see what we had before. Yep, I cleared the run. Okay. Alright, so this is the line that's printing the record split out wrong. Let's just take that out. So I equals on while I is less than record split length. It has to be greater than one for that to run. If it's not greater than one, that means all we have is the name. Well, hell, let me just run it again. Wonder if I picked the wrong file or something. No, that doesn't make sense. And anyway, I have to get it to work with all the files. Okay, uh, display class report. You're probably getting tired of seeing me go through this file array every time to find the damn files. Okay, what are we doing? The pyromaniacs again, yeah. The pyromancy. Alright, that's looking pretty good. And uh, so we could probably then do a min-man. Uh, what's some other stats that we'd like to have on these? Well, this is a good place to stop. So you can see that we've uh, added some refinements to the display. Uh, we're getting the average grade. We need to fiddle around with this. I don't like the way this is presented. I'm kind of thinking about, uh, first off, getting rid of this tab. And then uh, we'll add the average and the min-max onto the main column. So they'll just be additional columns. And then uh, maybe we can use the formatting to make these uh, fixed width rows so they line up nicely. Because it's going to be really hard to read a set of grades uh, for a larger uh, class. So we need to set this up with the formatting and make it nice. And we can do that on the next vid. Okay.